This is the starting point of a lakeside cottage makeover. And this cottage was built in 1969 when knotty pine was the main ingredient for decor. So now we are in 2011 and it is time to remove the knotty pine and move to something a little bit more colorful and with more contrast. So this is the starting point of the layout, but we need to improve this layout because the main traffic flow through the cottage, to the cottage is right here. So right now the stove and the refrigerator on this side and the sink is over here. So the traffic flow is going right through the work triangle. So we are going to change the layout. We are going to move the sink over to this wall, replace the window with wider windows to get more of the view. Where the sink is, we are going to put in a cooktop and an under counter oven below it for a nice seamless countertop. So it'll be an L shape, cooktop, oven below, sink, dishwasher next to it, and then the refrigerator on that corner, creating a nice L shape for the kitchen and then the main traffic flow is not going through the work triangle. And then the dining table will be created on the other side of the room. So on this side of the kitchen you can see where the refrigerator, the stove, and the microwave are and the main entrance into the cottage. So this clearly is, is a challenge to relocate all this stuff to improve the traffic flow. So when the refrigerator goes to that side, the stove goes to this side, we are creating an L-shaped bench, built-in bench, with a round table in the center so that it creates a nice uh, storage area with the bench will lift up with storage inside so you'll be able to seat four to six comfortably in a little nook. And then we'll use the wall for art and then we'll have a storage cabinet right on the end. So we've simplified that whole area, made the traffic flow go around the table, but still incorporating a, an eat-in kitchen. From this angle, you can see the connection of the kitchen to the living room. So what we're doing, we are going to open this up. Essentially, our bench area will be over here, and then this upper cabinet goes away, this goes away, and the new opening will be here. The refrigerator will be here, and we determined that length based on this door that will most likely always be open when the cottage is being used in the summer. So this will define where the refrigerator goes. This is the opening that will be created that connects to the living room. Okay, this is the family room and the kitchen is over there. We have two bedrooms and a bathroom that are beyond. So what we're doing in this space, the only thing we're doing is transforming it with paint. We are going to refinish the floors, but all the wood surfaces of the walls, all the vertical surfaces, will be paint. And we are doing in the linen white. The brick we are painting a darker green color, which will be the same color as the kitchen cabinets. We are leaving the wood ceiling. We're eliminating some insulating panels on this side, so that wood ceiling will be exposed. Unfortunately, the wagon wheel, the vintage wagon wheel light, will be replaced with something uh, probably a little bit more modern, maybe a wrought iron chandelier. But essentially, the only way this room is being changed is with paint. So here is the bathroom, which is a pretty good size. It has a sink, toilet, a full-size tub, shower combination. But what we're doing here, again, is painting all of the surfaces, including the ceiling. The floor will be replaced, but we are leaving the layout we're going to put in a, a vanity here, which is a vintage server, which we've painted, and it will have a self-rimming sink on it. We're going to keep this medicine cabinet right here. We're going to get these fixtures rewired so they still work because we like the vintage look of that. So we're going to have a vanity piece with storage below, put some hooks on the wall, replace the toilet, and then on this side, we are going to eliminate the tub, make it a shower, and make room for a washer and dryer. So this is the completed bathroom, and what we did here is the walls are still the same wood, but we've painted the walls, painted the ceiling. Chose to do a vinyl floor. It's a great vinyl. It looks like a slate, but it's a cost-effective way to change the flooring without raising the floor up because we had, that was our challenge. So we wanted to keep a low profile, which is why we went with the vinyl. We replaced the pedestal sink with a vintage server. And it's nice because it's one drawer, so you have storage in there. We have a self-rooming sink with a widespread faucet. We added a shelf down below so you could put towels or baskets and things. 
we left the medicine cabinet here. We left the vintage lights. We added, we changed the light up here. So we've increased the storage and the surface for the sink from um, going from pedestal to this, changed the toilets. And then on this side, we had a tub, but we changed it to a, a shower. So it has a nice roomy shower and we added a stack washer dryer over here. So we lost a linen closet, but we added the st uh, space for linen from the hall. So we have a stack washer dryer, which is new, a larger shower, and the sink and the toilet, and that's the finished bathroom. So the remodeling is complete, and here we are in the kitchen, and let me give you a tour. We changed the flow from this side to over to the left side. And let me start in this area and show you the highlights of the design. We utilize this wall space to maximize the floor to ceiling area for storage. So this is essentially the pantry storage. All the food and paper goods can be stored in this area. And then we created a built-in bench with a cushion, round table, and the bench has storage below with a lift seat, which we'll show you later. So that maximizes the area. We left the vintage light, which was here in the original cottage, which was on this side. We brought it over to here to illuminate the dining table. And then starting from here, we put a microwave above because we wanted to keep the counter clear. We have a double trash bin. So you have one for recycling, one for trash, which I always like to incorporate because it keeps the floor space clear and it's visually simple. We chose to do a cooktop with an oven below for a seamless counter so that it visually simplifies the area and you know it looks seamless, it's a nice clean look. We have a window above, so it's a nice area to be, you know, cooking, you're looking out. We extended the counter over to create an L shape with a single sink, it's nice and deep for washing pots and pans. And we have room for an 18 inch dishwasher here. So that's what we could fit. And 18 inch dishwashers are great for small families, you know, if you're gonna run it every day. And then we have the refrigerator down on this end. To maximize the corner, because we did have to do a blind corner um, storage area, so we have where the door has corner quarter shelves on, and then inside, which you can't see from there, it has roll-out shelves, so you can expand the storage and get in there by pulling the storage forward to reach in. So it's a great way to maximize a dead corner, per se. We did a tray storage for cookie sheets, and we chose to do more drawers so that you can have pots and pans and things here, easy, accessible to the cooktop. We did under cabinet lighting and we created this bracket detail to give some interest to the counter or to the cabinets. And then we wrapped it around, created a nice balance detail on the bottom. Under cabinet lighting is in there. Chose to do an open storage area for a more casual look easy to reach in for pots and pans, or sorry, for dishes and cups and things, so that's nice. It gives you a little bit of texture on the wall. The two pendant lights we chose to um, be a nice enhancement to the vintage light on this side, and then we incorporated two recessed lights over the cooktop for good illumination. The floors were refinished, the ceiling was refinished, the walls are also existing walls, but we repainted everything. So this is the seating area, and we created an L-shaped bench. We left a space on the wall for artwork instead of cluttering it with cabinetry or shelves. So it's a nice open look. Here is the vintage light, which we've incorporated. We did cushions on the seats, so it's nice and comfy round table for the flow, it keeps the space open, and some stools below so that if without having backs on it, it keeps it nice and open and you can push the stools underneath to keep the floor open as much as possible. And then to access the storage, you just slide the table forward and the cushion is on there, but you just lift up and then you can reach in. It's pretty simple. So it's great for stuff that you don't need to get to every, every day, but it's pretty simple. So consider a, a built-in seating area if you have a small kitchen so that you can incorporate storage and create a cozy seating area. 
So this is the family room side of the makeover. And essentially what we did here is we painted the brick, the same green as the kitchen, because these two spaces are open to each other, so it's important to have that consistency and that flow of color. So we painted the brick. All the walls in here are the same wood walls that were here, but we painted them the linen white. The ceiling, this side was already exposed wood. This had some foam panels on. That was eliminated, so now the whole ceiling is wood. The floors were refinished. A bigger window was brought in. So we have wood storage over here the fireplace and we have the TV on this side which they kept in the corner which is great sofa two chairs changed out the wagon wheel fixture although it was a great conversation piece it didn't provide a lot of great lighting so we went with a very simple wrought iron because we have this great vintage wrought iron stair over here so we wanted to bring in the wrought iron from the staircase to the light and then from the fireplace so it's a nice cohesive look. To highlight the transition and flow between the two spaces, we're starting from here. This is the main entry into the lake cottage. So we come in, we walk through the kitchen, the work triangle on this side, the seating area on this side, and then from here, during construction, we were able to, we, we found this space here, so we were able to create this bookshelf for additional storage or an accent for books. So that was a great discovery as we were laying out the bench in reality. We extended the stair platform steps down two times. And so you see you have the green over here. We have the refrigerator on this side. And this was all determined by the door that goes to the lake. So when the door is open as it is all summer, it doesn't impede the traffic flow or the kitchen. So we've simplified the traffic flow and we've gained more counter space and more storage without adding on. And that's the great thing about small spaces and reconfiguring them and reworking them. You can find some nice um, extra space for storage. So don't rule out small spaces as um, impossible to change or improve because this is a great example of how you can make over a space, make it better without adding on.